सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल कैरिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री पार्ट सी स्कूल सब्जेक्ट चैप्टर सेवन एजुकेशन इन इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी एरियाज पेज नंबर थ्री second developing the sensitivity capacities and understanding for living in harmony with nature including the range of urgent issues around climate change and the environment this ncf gives specific emphasis to developing interdisciplinary knowledge and capacities as also the use of development of values and dispositions including those related to the environment all subjects would include this interdisciplinary approach and aspects of living in harmony with nature and these would be addressed appropriately at each stage a in the foundational stage curricular goals are organized around the domains of development and not specific curricular areas or subjects therefore interdisciplinarity is inherent at this stage b in the preparatory stage the world around us that is twau is designed as an interdisciplinary area specifically meant to help students observe engage with and understand their immediate social and natural environment we have a picture here where a teacher is teaching some of his students page number 387 c at the middle stage interdisciplinary curricular goals are embedded within specific curricular areas interdisciplinary learning including learning about the environment is developed through specific goals and competencies in the learning standards and all the related curricular arrangements for achieving those from content and pedagogy to assessment page number 387 d in the secondary stage a specific curricular area called interdisciplinary areas is introduced to promote interdisciplinary knowledge capacities and thereby values and dispositions one in grades 9 and 10 the following essential subjects will be offered under interdisciplinary areas one individuals in society that is developing moral and ethical reasoning in grade 9 2 environmental education or ee in grade 10 2 in grades 11 and 12 interdisciplinary areas will include a range of subjects illustratively sustainability and climate change public and community health media and journalism legal studies commerce family and community sciences and indian knowledge systems the list and offering of subjects would depend on other practical considerations such as availability of teachers and interests of students the specific aims of each interdisciplinary area subject would be to develop an integrated understanding of the chosen subject matter while developing interdisciplinary capacities This chapter deals with the world around us in the preparatory stage and the two essential subjects individuals in society and environmental education in grades 9 and 10 of the secondary stage page number 388 section 7.1 aims the study of interdisciplinary areas develops interdisciplinary thinking which in turn prepares students for responding effectively to real life problems since real life situations are interdisciplinary interdisciplinary areas in schools should aim to achieve a holistic understanding through interdisciplinary thinking the study of interdisciplinary areas must teach students the ability to view their natural and social environment and related issues and events in an integrated manner developing the capacity to use knowledge and methods of inquiry from more than one discipline to analyze any phenomena with multiple perspectives will enrich students' approach to understanding the world 
interdisciplinary areas should break down the silos of disciplines which often render knowledge gained within disciplines unrelatable to the real life of the individual b living in harmony with nature an interdisciplinary approach must form the foundation for understanding nature and learning to live in harmony with it one sensitivity towards and appreciation of the environment interdisciplinary areas should help students see the connections between the natural environment and social processes they must develop an awareness and appreciation of the interdependence between the natural and human made environments and the various economic socio cultural political historical ethical and aesthetic dimensions of human societies the need for balance between the environment and human society will be part of this learning 2 environmental literacy interdisciplinary areas should develop an understanding of ecological systems natural resources environmental issues and interconnections between human activity and the environment this will enable students to make intelligent and informed decisions about individual and collective work to solve current problems and prevent new ones c ethical and moral reasoning key ethical and moral questions based on a comprehensive understanding of issues or events are integral to interdisciplinary areas students must learn to reason the ethical and moral dimensions of an issue or event in the light of the human and constitutional values mentioned in NEP 2020 they must develop the ability to take informed positions based on evidence and reason and advocate suitable action box 7.1 1 Environmental literacy prepares students for active participation in dealing with environmental issues. An environmentally literate person is someone who individually and collaboratively makes informed decisions concerning the environment, is willing to act on these decisions to improve the well-being of other individuals, societies and the global environment and participates in civic life. environmentally literate individuals possess the knowledge and understanding of a wide range of environmental concepts capacities dispositions and values that enable environmentally responsible behavior in a range of environmental contexts it requires going beyond fragmented thinking about the environment and thinking in terms of interactions of human and natural systems the production of environmentally literate citizens through formal education will enable the knowledge cognitive capacities and attitudes acquired in the classroom to be transferred to the decision making process of students throughout their lives page number 389 section 7.2 nature of knowledge in the preparatory stage knowledge in the world around us is concrete and related to the real world it is situated in exploration discovery dialogue with peers and adults visiting excursions observations and creating artifacts as well as stories poems folklore and other forms of arts and literature the world around us brings together the understanding of different aspects to derive generalized concepts related to students's immediate environment these concepts are largely around patterns processes which are social and natural and interconnections between the environment and human society through this curricular area students develop capacities of inquiry that are useful to make sense of and interact with the immediate natural and social environment in the secondary stage the knowledge base of both individuals in society and environmental education is interdisciplinary and rooted in knowledge capacities values and dispositions developed across subjects a comprehensive understanding at this stage requires being able to 
apply understanding values and dispositions from other subjects an understanding of events in the local community state nation and world in terms of priorities and concerns in the context of individuals in society and environmental education as well as along multiple dimensions which are social moral ethical political economic comprises this comprehensive understanding importantly an appreciation of the fact that there are no definitive answers to many human issues is required different interpretations and actions could be appropriate when seen from different perspectives or when placed in different contexts these subjects provide the opportunity to critically explore and analyze the coexistence of multiple truths and realities they offer multiple interpretations of a situation or an event which must converge into equitable just and sustainable solutions page number 390 section 7.3 potential challenges given this is a new curricular area challenges can only be anticipated primary among them is teacher preparedness this challenge has been already manifested in the teaching of environmental science or evs in grades 3 to 5 as per the existing curriculum as there is no formal structure to prepare teachers for evs they often tend to focus on concepts related to their subject specialization example language mathematics presently there are hardly any courses on environmental education and none that prepare teachers for this subject the case is similar with individuals in society it has also been generally observed that content related to the natural environment is managed with greater ease by teachers but they find issues connected to the social environment challenging while the capacity development of teachers is critical until pre service teacher education makes the necessary transitions the capacity for academic support in institutions will also need to be developed in terms of both the understanding of people and the building of resource material particularly for the secondary stage section 7.4 preparatory stage the world around us young children are intuitively inclined to observe their natural and social environments they interact with family members and neighbors and with the living and non living world around them they observe adults and develop the necessary understanding and skills required for them in their specific contexts the world around us curriculum uses this natural curiosity of students to help them gain a more systematic understanding of the natural and social environment in their immediate context as students engage with their environment they represent and express their understanding in different ways this helps them develop competencies related to other subjects of language mathematics and art as well 7.4.1 approach the approach will be to focus on the immediate environment of students with gradual progression of some aspects the city town village at the end of the preparatory stage in order to gain foundational knowledge of science and social science as well as grounding in environmental and vocational education the interdisciplinary approach taken will reflect the lives of students this will also ensure that students develop a holistic view of the world with an understanding of relationships and interdependencies knowledge values and dispositions will be developed through various sources from the locality region and country focus will be on stories poems narratives folklores histories and games from diverse sources page number 391 vocational education will be integrated in the world around us through the development of pre vocational capacities capacities related to understanding the occupations around them observing and engaging with animals and plants and creating simple objects lay 
द फाउंडेशन फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ वोकेशनल कैपेसिटीज इन द मिडल स्टेज द पेडोगॉजी एट दिस स्टेज विल ऑल्सो लैंड इट सेल्फ टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ प्री वोकेशनल कैपेसिटीज एग्जाम्पल मेंटेनिंग फ्लावर पॉट्स और किचन गार्डन्स क्लेम मॉडलिंग एंड डायलॉग विद शॉपकीपर्स ड्यूरिंग विजिट्स टू द लोकल मार्केट्स सेवन पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट टू लर्निंग स्टैंडर्ड्स द करिकुलर गोल्स एंड कॉम्पिटेंसीज फॉर द वर्ल्ड अराउंड अस इंडिकेट द एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स रिलेटेड टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द सोशल एंड फिजिकल इन्वायरमेंट एट दिस स्टेज अ स्ट्रक्चर्ड एक्सप्लोरेशन ऑफ दिस एनवायरमेंट डेवलप्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज वेल एज द कैपेसिटीज टू डीपन एंड एक्सटेंड दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग सेवन पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट टू पॉइंट वन करिकुलर गोल्स एंड कॉम्पिटेंसीज सी जी वन एक्सप्लोर्स एंड एंगेजेस विद द नेचुरल एंड सोशियो कल्चरल एनवायरमेंट इन दियर सराउंडिंग्स सी वन पॉइंट वन ऑब्जर्व्स एंड आइडेंटिफाइज द नेचुरल दैट इज इंसेक्ट्स प्लांट्स बर्ड्स एनिमल्स जियोग्राफिकल फीचर्स सन एंड मून स्टार्स प्लानिट्स नेचुरल रिसोर्सिस एंड सोशल दैट इज houses relationships components in their immediate environment c1.2 describes relationships that is including between humans and animals or nature and traditions that is art forms celebrations festivals in the family and community c1.3 asks questions and makes predictions about simple patterns that is season change food chain phase of the moon movement of stars and planets shapes of trees plants leaves and flowers rituals celebrations observed in the immediate environment c 1.4 explains the functioning of local institutions that is family school bank or post office market and panchayat in different forms that is story drawing tabulating data reports and analyzes their roles c1.5 uses local materials to create simple objects that is family tree envelopes origami animals on their own for display or use in classroom processes cg2 understands the interdependence in their environment through observation and experiences developing the basis for appreciation of the idea of vasudhev kutumbakam c 2.1 identifies natural and human made systems that support their lives that is water supply water cycle river flow systems seasons life cycle of plants and animals food household items transport communication electricity in the house C 2.2 describes the relationship between the natural environment and cultural practices in their immediate environment that is nature of work food festivals traditions C 2.3 connects changes in the environment and the lives of their family and community as communicated by elders and through local stories that is changes in occupation food habits resources celebrations communication page number 392 cg3 explains how to ensure the safety of self and others in different that is normal as well as emergency situations c3.1 describes the basic safety needs and protection that is health and hygiene food water shelter precautions awareness of emergency situations abuse and unsafe situations of humans birds and animals c3.2 discusses how to prepare for emergency situations that is smoke fire small injuries burns electrical safety unseasonal rains fallen trees based on discussions with family and community or personal experiences c3.3 develops simple labels and slogans and participates in role play on safety and protection in the local environment to be displayed or done in school and locality cg4 develops sensitivity 
towards social and natural environment. C4.1 observes and describes diversity among plants and birds and animals in their immediate environment, shape, sounds, food habits, growth, habitat. C4.2 observes and describes cultural diversity in their immediate environment, that is, food, clothing, games, different seasons, festivals related to harvest and sowing. C4.3 describes usage of natural resources in their immediate environment. C4.4 demonstrates how natural resources can be shared, maintained and conserved, that is, trees, use of rainwater, benefits of millets. C4.5 identifies needs of plants, birds and animals and how they can be supported, that is, water, soil, food, care. C4.6 identifies the needs of people in different situations in terms of access to resources, equal opportunities, work distribution and shelter. C4.7 learns about basic social and behavioral norms, values and dispositions that benefit our social and natural environments and that help our society function smoothly using dustbins, standing in queues, conserving water, using public transportation, keeping one's environment clean, always helping others in need regardless of background. CG5 develops the ability to read and interpret simple maps. C5.1 explains a line drawing of their school, village and ward. C5.2 draws a sketch of their school, village and ward using symbols and directions. C5.3 reads simple maps of city, state and country to identify natural and human-made features that is, well, lake, post office, school, hospital with reference to symbols and directions. CG6 uses data and information from various sources to investigate questions related to their immediate environment. C6.1 performs simple inquiry related to specific questions independently or in groups. C6.2 presents observations and findings through different creative modes, that is, drawing, diagram, poem, play, skit, oral and written expressions. Page 393 CG7 gains foundational familiarity with basic concepts and methods from the natural sciences, that is, life sciences, physical sciences, and earth and space sciences, and engineering. C7.1 gains familiarity with using the scientific method in investigations as well as familiarity with other cross-cutting concepts such as energy, matter and systems that apply across the domains of science and engineering. C7.2 gains familiarity with disciplinary core ideas in the natural sciences as well as in engineering, technology and applications of science which reflect the content that will be learned across subject areas in later grades. Page number 393 7.4.3 Content The approach principles and methods of selecting content have commonalities across subjects. Those have been discussed in Part A, Chapter 3, Section 3.2 of this document. This section focuses only on what is most critical to the world around us. Hence, it will be useful to read the section along with the above-mentioned section. 7.4.3.1 Principles of Content Selection The following principles will inform the selection of content for the world around us. A. Content selected must enable the development of essential process capacities. Observation, making hypotheses, experimentation to test hypotheses, data collection and analysis, discussion. For example, 1. 
assign tasks based on the natural curiosity of students with reference to specific questions or assumptions or hypotheses they could be asked to observe and record the growth of plants from seeds under different conditions that is in different kinds of soil under different amounts of sunlight extend this experience to students's own lives and ask them to describe their observations and hypotheses on how crops or plants grow in pots they can discuss the various uses of plants 3 organize visits to local markets fairs museum and monuments and share observations and experiences throughout the processes using different modes 4 conduct hands-on experiments to test hypotheses and make informed conclusions experiments can be conducted in groups to encourage collaboration teamwork and social interaction b content selected should enable maximum possible social interaction and interaction with the natural environment for example one identity and relationships within family and community plants and animals own body geographical features transportation and communication local institutions migration of families different habits in different communities that is food practices traditions food habits and shelter of animals various local traditional art forms festivals and celebrations community melas and marriage celebrations day and night time of sunrise and sunset patterns sun moon stars and planets page number 394 c content selected should reflect diversity and must be inclusive while developing sensitivity and breaking stereotypes for example 1 diversity of geographical characteristics flora and fauna around them 2 impact of hot water or excessive rain on plants and animals 3 practices related to work especially with reference to gender division of labor at home food distribution in families understanding the context of migrant laborers d content must move from the local context to an understanding of social and natural environments beyond the immediate environment as students progress across grades 1 content should be contextual and related to the immediate environment in lower grades of this stage 2 gradually increase exposure to other contexts through comparison and analogy is important multiple geographies genders communities for example if the concept of transport has to be discussed content can include the pictures in the textbook discussion of modes of transport in the community sharing of narratives of travel by students local news reports related to transportation instances of use of these roads by the local community videos of modes of transport that are not available in the locality example understanding trains in a school in the upper himalayas e content selected should be such that it can be presented in multiple ways which go beyond the textbook for example students should have the opportunity to explore the same content in various modes as indicated below 1 case studies 2 visual representation through pictures and simple maps 3 using ict based resources videos to give evidence for discussions and or support discussions on specific issues 4 poems stories plays games and new stories 5 folklore folk songs oral histories and oral narratives 6 visual art projects 7 building of models scientific tinkering and engaging in hands on experiments to test hypotheses f environmental values and dispositions must be integrated in the content and should enable pedagogy that is not didactic or prescriptive 
For example, 1. Judicious use of water. 2. Dignity of living beings. 3. Impact of humans on the environment. 4. Needs of plants and animals. G. Content must incorporate Indian knowledge and local culture. For example, 1. Food preservation. 2. Processes to conserve resources, including local wells and step wells. 3. Local literature, alignment with contemporary knowledge, natural disasters and human nature conflicts. Page number 395, 7.4.4 Pedagogy and Assessment The approach, principles and methods of pedagogy and assessment have commonalities across subjects. Those have been discussed in Part A, Chapter 3, Section 3.3 and Section 3.4 of this document. This section focuses only on what is most critical to the world around us. Hence, it will be useful to read this section along with the above mentioned section. 7.4.4.1 Pedagogy for the world around us Environment for students in the preparatory stage is what is immediately around them and affects their lives. Students learn about the environment through structured interaction with their natural and social environment, exploration, discussion of experiences and observations, interaction with adults and peers, exemplars, task-oriented activities, structured observations, experiments, surveys and visits. This engagement with the immediate environment provides a base for moving into exploring larger systems from locality to district, to region, to state, to nation, to world. Broader issues, from home to community to larger society and an expanding understanding of concerns, connections and consequences. Thus, students' engagement with their immediate environment leads to an understanding of distant environments. They are able to apply their understanding from near to far and vice versa. Values and dispositions Example, collaboration, respect for diversity, inclusion, scientific temper, sensitivity towards the social and natural environment are best developed if they are demonstrated by adults in the school. Students must also get the opportunity to practice them in their interactions. 7.4.4.1.1 Pedagogical Approaches Students' questions and experiences related to the social and physical environment and of social processes around them, that is, including school and family, must be given space. This establishes trust and empathy between the teacher and students. Teachers need to help students develop conceptual understanding instead of accumulating facts. This implies that sufficient time must be provided for surveys, explorations, visits to institutions, excursions, including within the school campus, observation, experiments, simple inquiry, dialogue with teachers and peers, role play, questioning and the communication of ideas. Task-oriented work wherein they take up small tasks helps students connect learning to doing. Through the creation of simple models and toys, they can communicate their understanding and make learning concrete in the process. Allowing students to take the lead in material development through a variety of modes like art and craft, story, drama and hands-on experiments provides space for them to be involved in several small-scale and large-scale assignments and projects. This is also invaluable for the development of pre-vocational capacities. Teachers must also be aware of values and dispositions that can be developed through activities and plan deliberately to offer students' experiences. They should also make the values and dispositions explicit for students by drawing attention to them. They should also make them explicit for students by drawing attention to specific values and dispositions. 
example, collaborative learning, developing a scientific temper, working in diverse groups, analyzing work distribution at home, caring for the environment, cleanliness, standing in queues. Page number 396, Teacher's Voice 7.41 Bal Shodh Mela I teach grades 3, 4 and 5 in a rural school. Over the years, Bal Shodh Melas have become an integral part of my pedagogy to give my students an interdisciplinary exposure. Bal Shodh Melas or Children's Research Festivals are intended to encourage students' inherent sense of curiosity and interest in exploring their surroundings and excitement to engage with new learning. Bal Shodh Melas encourage students to engage in research. I scaffold them to conduct simple inquiries on local issues or topics by formulating questions collecting data and drawing conclusions. The process encourages creative expression and independent reading and writing, as well as collaboration among students. It is also a wonderful way for me to strengthen relations with the community, since community members are also invited to the Mela, organized to close the process. Through this process, learning happens in an integrated way. Capacities developed across subjects are used by students and learning is concretized within their own contexts. A few illustrative topics that my students have taken up for research are My house, the history of our village or area, the geographical and natural location of our area, trees and vegetation around us, business and work, birds and animals around us, means of transport, demography of our village or ward, local folklore and folk tales, folk sayings and phrases. I have fellow teachers who use this even in crowded urban contexts as there is plenty of scope for exploration there too. For example, towns and cities go through a tremendous change and usually have people from diverse communities living there, not all of whom are originally from there. So students can collect stories such as, when was a shop set up? Where is the shopkeeper originally from? What conditions prompted them to migrate? And so on. After all, the objective is to collect stories and what can be more interesting than the stories of the people around us? 7.4.5 Assessment in the world around us A few key principles of assessment are A. Students must be assessed for understanding of concepts and for the ability to demonstrate capacities particular to this subject, example, Observation, making hypotheses, testing hypotheses via suitable experiments, identification and classification. b. Students must be assessed using oral, written and other performance tasks in a variety of ways. Example, answering good questions, making presentations based on group work, creating artifacts, designing or replicating experiments, analyzing data and results, and participating in discussions. Page number 397. A few teacher voices illustrate different kinds of assessment below. Teacher's voice 7.42. Types of shelters. I teach grade 5. I wanted to assess my students' understanding of types of shelters and why Different regions need different kinds of shelters. Instead of asking students the usual kind of question on the types of houses in different regions, I tried something different. The question below has an illustration that helps students visualize a house with a particular kind of roof and why it does so. Even if they do not recall that rainy and snowy areas have houses with sloping roofs, they are able to logically deduce the reason for this kind of roof from amongst the given answer choices. In places with heavy rainfall, houses 
have sloping roofs because such roofs a protect the house from strong sunlight b protect the house from wind and dust c provide more storage space in the house d prevent rain water from collecting on the roof teacher's voice 7.43 pre vocational capacities i teach grade 4 the task below is intended to assess both students' pre vocational capacities as well as students' understanding of environmental concerns this is instead of simply asking them to respond to a direct question on how the planet can be kept healthy one you have been given chart paper crayons pencil sharpener rubber scale bindis colored paper and glue two create a poster on the theme grow plants to keep the planet healthy i used the following criteria to grade my students we have a table here this table has four columns criteria grade c grade b grade a row 1 uses only few materials uses most of the materials uses all materials in a meaningful way row 2 understanding of the task creates a drawing that does not convey the theme creates a drawing according to the theme creates a thematic representation to convey the theme row 3 cleaning up after completion of task leaves materials lying around puts materials together in one place differentiates between waste and reusable materials and places material in appropriate places page number 398 teacher's voice 7.4 4 signs and symbols on the road i teach grade 5 the following question assesses students's understanding of signs and symbols encountered during road travel as well as their ability to interpret them instead of asking them directly about different types of milestones this question gives them visual clues that can be used to respond to the question Imagine you are traveling to Raipur from Surat you will see many milestones on the way given below are two milestones both showing the distance to Raipur but are different one is painted yellow and white while the other is painted green and white a what does the yellow and white milestone tell us b what does the green and white milestone tell us marking scheme total five points we have a table here this table has three columns question response points question a total three points yellow and white milestone tells us we are on a national highway one point the yellow and white milestone tells us that we are on national highway 53 one point the yellow and white milestone tells us that we are at a distance of 85 km from raipur 1 point question b total 2 points the green and white milestone tells us that we are on a state highway 1 point the green and white milestone tells us we are at a distance of 30 km from raipur 1 point note students do not need to respond in the exact words given in the marking scheme the idea should be the same no points should be deducted for aspects like grammar and spelling section 7.5 secondary stage grades 9 and 10 the secondary stage would introduce interdisciplinary areas as a curricular area in grade 9 the subject individuals in society would aim to develop capacities for ethical and moral reasoning and in grade 10 the subject environmental education would then further develop and apply these capacities in the context of environmental awareness 7.5.1 grade 9 individuals in society ethical and moral reasoning involves thinking about 
fundamental questions related to everyday events. What is right or wrong? Can right or wrong be identified? What actions are justified? What is the right thing to do? What are the reasons that justify the right thing? This type of reasoning is necessary for responding rationally to situations instead of impulsively or instinctively. Page number 399 For example, the instinctive reaction to some situation may be driven by short-term self-interest. But the process of ethical and moral reasoning enables determining the right actions not only for oneself but also for others in the same situation. These questions are equally applicable across common situations that we encounter in real life. For example, on one hand, a road may bring material prosperity to a village, but on the other hand, it may affect the natural environment and influence the cultural community. What is the right thing to do? Tourism will alleviate poverty in a region and also permanently change the area and its inhabitants. So, what should be done? Can a war be termed just if it is fought to protect the interests of the disadvantaged? Responding to these questions requires systematic reasoning in the following way. A. To begin with, it requires an awareness of events, the context, the factors affecting it and the people involved. B. Second, it requires identification of ethical and moral questions, whether there is violation of basic human and constitutional values or any danger of the well-being and or rights of any individual or community being affected. C. Third, Arguments need to be constructed for and against possible actions. D. Fourth, deciding what is the right thing to do, the evidence used to make this claim and how the action or actions will be carried out. E. Finally, identifying possible consequences of the proposed actions and what other steps can be taken to counter these. These capacities cannot be developed in vacuum. Socio-cultural, economic and political issues and current affairs are best suited to meet the aim of developing them. Ethical and moral reasoning in this context requires the application of understanding gained from multiple subjects as well as the moral and ethical values that are developed as a part of other curricular areas. Therefore, this subject is a part of interdisciplinary areas 7.5.1.1 learning standards in the middle stage students develop multiple capacities including values and dispositions related to human and constitutional values they engage with various concepts particularly those related to science social science as well as the environment individuals in society is intended to enable students to use these capacities and understanding in an interdisciplinary manner in the secondary stage. Through this, they will develop the capacity for ethical and moral reasoning in the context of issues or events with a wide impact and current affairs. Page number 400 7.5.1.1.1 Curricular Goals and Competencies CG1 develops capacity for ethical and moral reasoning. C1.1 examines an issue or event from multiple perspectives, socio-cultural, economic, political and environmental. C1.2 articulates ethical and moral questions on an issue or event. C1.3 identifies different positions related to an issue or event and provides arguments supported by rationale for each. C1.4 identifies the human values including those from Indian cultural heritage and the Indian constitution relevant to an issue or event. CG2 develops capacity to analyze current affairs from multiple perspectives. C2.1 uses authentic sources of news, views 
and opinions to develop an understanding of current affairs particularly current affairs in india c2.2 communicates and advocates opinions and alternatives through a variety of modes writing speaking debates discussions cg3 applies ethical and moral reasoning to engage with current affairs related to the local community state nation and the larger world c3.1 identifies and explores issues or events within the community from multiple perspectives historical social cultural economic C3.2 discusses issues or events at the district, state, national and international level. 7.5.1.2 Content The approach, principles and methods of selecting content has commonalities across subjects. Those have been discussed in part A, chapter 3, section 3.2 of this document. This section focuses only on what is essential for individuals in society hence it will be useful to read this section along with the above mentioned section to meet the curricular goals the content must draw from all the important domains of an individual's participation in larger society while these domains can be categorized as socio cultural economic and political specific focus on the environment is also necessary therefore students must gain adequate exposure to issues or events within all the following domains a socio cultural domain b economic domain c political domain d environmental domain all issues or events will fall primarily within those domains at the same time these domains are not watertight some issues or events may have dimensions falling within one or more of the domains page number 401 7.5.1.2.1 principles of content selection two sets of content will be required for this subject a content related to existing issues or events with wide reaching impact the purpose of this first set will be to help students engage with specific issues or events that reflect larger concerns which may have been persisting for a long time even centuries through case studies short films and documents the reason for the inclusion of this content is to simulate the process of exploring multiple perspectives identifying core issues or events the debates that arose and how they were resolved or remain yet to be resolved students will be able to understand the long term consequences of these events and appreciate the importance of taking moral and ethical positions this content will help them strengthen their own values and principles and also help them experience the process of reasoning that is necessary for taking an informed position the principles that will inform the selection of this content are 1 sufficient content should be available with information opinion pieces data debates news reports and similar material to enable an understanding of multiple perspectives 2 the content should make these moral and ethical questions explicit and offer well rounded arguments based on evidence and reasoning for responding to each of these questions 3 there should be a sufficient record of actions consequences and positive changes there should be scope to examine different perspectives for change and the consequences of these changes 4 even if the matter under discussion is not recent there should be sufficient material to evolve ethical and moral questions and how they have been addressed explicitly example concerns related to the environment illustratively gender inequality unequal access to resources debates related to the role of science and technology political participation 
and environmental concerns could be some areas around which materials could be made available b content related to current affairs the second set of content is related to current affairs this set will be dynamic it will be selected by the teacher and students based on their interest in current affairs this content will integrate the learning of students in several circular areas and help them apply the capacities developed through engaging with the first set of content it will comprise two kinds of content one news reports articles clippings of tv news videos on social media and data and two interviews with community members and reports of surveys within the community the reason for inclusion of this content is to develop among students interest and understanding to engage with current affairs page number 402 the following set of principles will inform this choice one content should be related to all four domains illustratively one content from the socio cultural domain could be around gender class sports and media two content from the economic domain could be around public investment wealth gap employment and schemes three content from the political domain could be around rights and duties civic engagement democratic processes crime safety and security four content from the environment could be around health and hygiene climate change pollution and biodiversity two content should enable students to engage with different dimensions and allow greater scope for ethical and moral reasoning illustratively one whether the acquisition of agricultural land for developing airports is justified by the increased livelihood opportunities and improved access to other cities 3 content should be close to the students's life and experiences and current learning across disciplines illustratively 1 students may find it difficult to relate to mass shootings in other countries on the other hand effect of long term use of chemical fertilizers in rural settings and the rich poor divide in urban settings can be taken up 4 content selected should not lead to confrontation among students or lead to backlash from the community illustratively one content that touches religious sentiments two content related to an area that has already polarized communities and is likely to excite passions five content should be of various kinds digital text reading opinion pieces newspaper reports parliamentary debates research reports data as well as discussions with community members 6 in this age of information overload and fake news it must be ensured the material is from a reliable and valid source illustratively content must be from one reliable magazines and newspapers or their websites two videos of acknowledged experts in the field 3 websites of reliable agencies or government departments or institutions or universities 7.5.1.3 pedagogy and assessment the approach principles and methods of pedagogy and assessment have commonalities across subjects those have been discussed in part a chapter 3 section 3.3 and section 3.4 of this document this section focuses only on what is most essential for individuals in society hence it will be useful to read this section along with the above mentioned section page number 403 7.5.1.3.1 pedagogy for individuals in society the curricular goals of this area will be best met through giving students the opportunity to engage with different content in different ways to this end the pedagogical principles should be a 
students must be supported through the process of engaging with an issue or event before they work independently. This must be done through a set of questions and ongoing discussions to help them examine content from different perspectives. The process itself, how students engage with content, how they identified what was important, how it made them feel, the questions they felt the need to reflect on or discuss, how they looked for answers to these questions, whether they satisfied with the answers, how they chose a view or opinion and why, must be discussed. b. Students must be encouraged to look for information to answer any questions they may have or for supplementary materials. Illustratively, they can ask community members, teachers and any experts they know or they can visit the local library and search the internet. c. Students should engage with as much content as possible and with different kinds of content. They should explore this content independently or in groups. d. Students must present not only their learning but also their opinions on what they have read. For example, if they have read a case study on biodiversity collapse, they must present both what they have learnt and also their opinions on how this collapse can be managed in their locality. e. Students must have the opportunity to present opinions that may differ and learn the process of listening to each other, put forth well-thought arguments and be able to agree to disagree. Teacher's Voice 7.51 Mission to Mars One of my students brought a newspaper clipping on a manned mission to Mars to class. I asked her to read it out to the other students. There was a lot of excitement. I have tried to capture the conversation here. Student A I don't think humans can live on Mars. In our science class, Madam was saying that the conditions on Mars are not all right for human life. Student B. They will not be able to live like we do on Earth. They will have to live inside something like tents. But how will the tents be kept cool? How will they get water? How will they get electricity? Student C. The report says that it will take seven months to reach Mars. What if an astronaut gets sick on the way? Will they come back? Even if doctors are on board, what if they need specialized equipment? Student A. The report says that the trip will cost billions of dollars. That is, many hundred crores of rupees. Student D. Don't we have many other things to spend the money on? And the astronauts will be in danger. And what will they do on Mars? Page number 404 Student E But going to Mars is like what travelling the seas was for ancient travellers. If they had thought about dangers and stayed at home, imagine what the world be like. Maybe we wouldn't have invented airplanes because everyone was happy to stay at home. At this point, I thought this would be a good area to explore. I asked students, what if we try to answer the question, is such a mission to Mars important for humankind? The students were excited about the idea. I asked them to think about the following questions and any others they could think of. A. What is the manned mission to Mars? Who planned it? Why has it been planned? Who is paying for it? Who will be going on the mission? When is it expected to take off? What are the challenges? Any other questions? B. Do you see any challenges related to the well-being of astronauts? How will they and their families deal with the separation? Will their sacrifice be worth it? Can the money being spent on this mission be used elsewhere to improve human existence? We have seen that human entry into space has created space debris. Has space exploration affected the environment in any other way? 
Any other questions? C. What are the arguments for and against a manned mission to Mars? Any other questions? D. What do you think is the right thing to do? Why do you feel this is the right thing? Any other questions? E. What will happen if your position is accepted? What will be the results? Are there any other steps that can be taken? Any other questions? 7.5.1.3.2 Assessment in Individuals in Society A few key principles for assessment are A. Students must be assessed for understanding the context of a situation or event, the ability to identify ethical and moral dimensions and the ability to recommend actions based on sound rationale and awareness of the consequences of the action. B. Assessment of engagement with current affairs must never be only on the basis of general knowledge. It must be assessed with reference to specific situations or issues students are made aware of. C. Assessment must be based on specific situations, issues or caselets. Page number 405 a few teacher voices illustrate different kinds of assessments here. Teacher's Voice 7.52 Real versus Fake News I teach grade 9. The question below assesses students' understanding of how to verify whether a particular piece of news is real or fake. It provides a specific situation as a context instead of simply asking them about different ways of verifying news as real or fake. While reading the newspaper today, you can come across an article that surprised you. It said that it will be mandatory for citizens to file their income tax returns twice a year instead of once a year. This is to make the process more manageable for the income tax department. How can you verify this news? Please choose the most appropriate option. A. You can check if other newspapers and television are carrying the same news. B. You can check if there is a notification regarding the same on the IT department website. C. What are the arguments for and against a manned mission to Mars? Any other questions? D. You can carefully check who has written the article and the sources cited. E. A and B. F. All of the above. I used the following marking scheme A1, B1, C1, D0, E4. Teacher's Voice 7.53 Analyzing a Case. I teach grade 9. The question here assesses students' capacity to identify what is right or not in the context of a specific case. The questions do not have just a single correct answer. Students are required to pick what they think is the most appropriate choice. I feel that asking them to weigh choices is better than asking them to state responses directly. In May 2016, the government had passed the Real Estate Regulatory Authority or RERA Act to ensure safe and transparent transactions related to private and commercial properties. While several reforms have been made, issues still persist particularly in urban areas. Of late, news related to demolition of illegally constructed multi-storey buildings or of construction being stopped due to legal issues in urban areas have appeared. For example, 1. In January 2021, the Supreme Court ordered demolition of four tar blocks that violated environmental norms in Kochi. About 350 families were displaced after years of uncertainty while the case was being heard in various courts. Page number 406. In June 2022, the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission or NCDRC 
ordered a real estate development company to halt construction of an 11th tower for which the builder did not have permission in its residential project in Gurugram. Flats in the tower had already been sold. About 50 families who had invested in flats in the illegal tower have been affected after more than a year of uncertainty. 2. In August 2022, two 40-storey towers were demolished on the orders of the Supreme Court in Emerald Court, Noida, as the builders had violated building norms. About 600 families were affected after years of uncertainty while the case was being heard in various courts. 1. Why do you think the Supreme Court and NCDRC took this position? Choose what you think is the most important reason. A. They are bound to go by the law and the rules for building. B. If they allow violations, other builders will also not obey the rules. C. Violations are dangerous as they affect the strength and stability of structures. D. All builders must be aware of rules for multi-storey buildings. 2. What do you think was the impact on families who bought the flats? Choose what you think is the most important impact. A. They suffered monetary losses as they had to stay on rent while having paid for a flat. B. They suffered loss of time as they had to keep going to court and to meet the builder. C. They suffered mental harassment due to uncertainty from the long waiting period. D. Their rights as consumers were violated as the builder failed to meet the contract. 3. People say that while buying flats from builders, home buyers should be more alert. Whose responsibility is it to ensure home buyers have all the information they need before investing in a flat? A. It is the responsibility of the home buyers themselves to check whether the builder has all necessary approvals. B. The website of the RERA must carry information regarding approvals for all building projects in simple words. C. It is the responsibility of the builder to give all information in writing and provide updates. D. It is the responsibility of the state government to ensure the builder has all necessary permissions. Page number 407 the marking scheme that I used was as follows. Question 1 A1, B1, C2, D1 Question 2 A1, B1, C1, D2 Question 3 A0, B2, C1, D0 Teacher's Voice 7.5, 4 Multiple Perspectives I teach Grade 9. The following question assesses students' understanding of what is right and why of multiple perspectives related to a single issue and their ability to identify actions at multiple levels and provide a rationale for these actions. Panchmoor village near Bishnupur, Bankura district is one of the main hubs of terracotta in West Bengal. Terracotta came into existence in Bengal due to the unavailability of stones and large endowments of alluvial soil left by the main rivers in the Bankura district, Damodar, Dwarkeshwar and the Kangsabati. Thus, the soil gets a perfect blend and high density for it to be crafted intricately and fired in order to produce the required terracotta products. Terracotta is of high interest in both the national and global markets. However, the artisans face issues of equipment, transportation and other logistical problems. There is lack of of interaction between the artisans and the urban consumers in Kolkata and the artisans are mostly dependent on local patronage since they are not able to make much money 
capital for further investment in tools and materials is limited. Further, sluggish marketing and falling demand are causing these marginalized artisans to become extinct. The lack of interest from the new generation further add to the woes. The terracotta temples in Bishnupur show a much better quality and precision than the artifacts being produced today. For example, the details of the terracotta tiles used in the temples are much more intricate and portray a more complex network of lines, curves and dots. With the improvement in technology and instruments, how is this possible? Extinction of skill-specific labour is the answer to this. According to the locals, previously, the process of terracotta production in Bankura included three major classes of workers. The clay collectors and sievers, who would give a fine texture to the clay, the artisans who would add the intricate details, and finally, the market traders. There is no specific class of labour anymore for each of these three roles. Also, Bankura artisans gradually scattered to different parts of the country, especially with young people moving to Kolkata to earn money. The remaining few of Panchmura are still struggling to keep this art form alive. Source, adapted from Bhaumik Somya, 2019, Bankura's terracotta can timely measures facilitate socio-economic revival of Potter's community. Observer Research Foundation Page number 408 Based on the passage above, please respond to the following questions. 1. Why do you think it is important to keep the art of terracotta alive? 2. Should the artisans of Panchmura continue to struggle? to keep their art alive, give reasons for and against their doing so. 3. If you were in a position to do so, what would you advise the artisans of Panchmura and why? 4. If you were in a position to do so, what would you advise the government of West Bengal and the Development Commissioner of Handicrafts, Ministry of Textiles and why? I used the following criteria to mark my students' performance. Students' responses. Question 1. Give reasons based on the passage. 1. Goes beyond the reasons given in the passage, including preservation of socio-cultural traditions. 2. Question 2. States a few reasons for artisans to persist and face the challenges. 1 argues reasons for and against the artisans to persist based on reasons given in response to question 1. 2. Question 3. Suggestions are given without rationale. 1. Provides concrete suggestions, example setting up self-help groups, approaching the government for support and how these will overcome the challenges faced by the artisans. 2. Question 4. Suggestions are given without rationale. 1. Provides concrete suggestions. Example, facilitation of participation in crafts mela, setting up funds for preserving traditional crafts and how these will help overcome the challenges faced by the artisans. 2. 7.5.2. Grade 10. Environmental Education. In grade 10, students will engage with environmental education as a separate subject. They will focus on a holistic understanding of key concerns and issues related to environmental education through drawing upon their understanding across areas and the capacities developed in grade 9. At this stage, students will deepen their environmental knowledge assess issues and analyze their causes across various areas, make informed judgments on statements and debates in media and society and use a range of techniques developed in earlier grades to investigate, analyze, synthesize, question, critique and draw their own conclusions.
they will use multiple perspectives to develop an integrated understanding and advocate actions at multiple levels page number 409 while it is important that students in this stage acquire a conceptual understanding of environmental issues and challenges as well as an appreciation of the magnitude of the problem it is equally important to ensure they do not get discouraged or despair for their future the intent is not to scare students or pin responsibility on them to respond to the crisis therefore the presentation of alternatives through examples of actions taken to reverse or at least contain environmental damage must be ensured at the same time it is important to emphasize that the onus for mitigation cannot be solely on the individual and the whole community and society must be mobilized for this 7.5.2.1 learning standards all students must be aware of what is happening around them related to the environment to be able to advocate and participate in necessary action environmental education intends to develop the environmental understanding necessary in all citizens as well as the methods and capacities they must employ as ordinary citizens example problem identification causes future impact visualization prediction policy actions societal actions as well as actions at the level of individuals and the ability to critique specific actions and their impact 7.5.2.1.1 curricular goals and competencies cg1 understands key issues and challenges related to climate change pollution and biodiversity collapse c1.1 explains how climate change pollution and biodiversity collapse affect human well-being that is economic activity migration cultural practices and the well-being of plant and animal species c1.2 understands connections between and the causes underlying pollution climate change and biodiversity collapse cg2 appreciates the need for interconnectedness balance and harmony between human society and nature the essence of vasudev kutumbakam C2.1 describes the place of humans within ecosystems and illustrates how humans and natural ecosystems are interconnected and must coexist. C2.2 illustrates actions at the individual, local, community, national and international level towards mitigation of issues related to environmental damage. C2.3 identifies actions that can be taken at the level of the school or local community to counter environment related concerns 7.5.2.2 content the approach principles and methods of selecting content have commonalities across subjects those have been discussed in part a chapter 3 section 3.2 of this document This section focuses only on what is most essential for environmental education hence it will be useful to read this section along with the above mentioned section 7.5.2.2.1 principles of content selection the following principles must inform content selection for environmental education at the secondary stage a content must reflect indigenous and global perspectives and reflect actions and potential actions of individuals bodies or institutions and nations it must develop the understanding that collaborative and sustained local and global solutions are needed page number 410 for example 1 the scientific basis and causes of climate system and climate change causes of biodiversity collapse and its impact causes and impact of pollution interrelationships among them 2 vulnerability of socio-economic and natural systems to climate change consequences of climate change 
and options for adapting to it. 3. Use of natural resources like petrol across the globe and how it has affected economies and cultures, loss of glacial ice, climate change and rising sea levels, flooding due to heavy rains, soil erosion in islands, shrinking of rivers. 4. Measures taken to address these changes and sustainable practices. 5. Local and global efforts towards mitigation of or adaptation to climate change. United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Kyoto Protocol, that is Carbon Credits, Emissions Reduction Purchase Agreement, Conferences of Parties, Cancun Agreement, Durban Platform for Enhanced Action. B. Content must present strong qualitative case studies and quantitative data that indicate the impact of events and phenomena and enable analysis of contemporary impact. It should enable a holistic study through offering multiple perspectives and include stories of successful transformations. These case studies should be local, which can be selected by the state curriculum developers or teachers, national and international. For example, 1. Jal Jeevan and projects to clean rivers, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. 2. Sustainable homes with natural materials and cooling or heating systems in India. 3. Astrotourism for sustainable rural development in Ladakh and Africa. 4. Developmental needs versus conservation of environment. 5. Disposal of e-waste, bio-waste, medical waste, including radioactive materials. 6. Case studies of work and impact of grassroots individuals and organizations. C. Content should represent inter- and intranation ethical dilemmas and conflicts related to the environment and cultures or countries, as well as indicate how these have been or can be resolved. For example, 1. Sharing of river waters. 2. Carbon credits or offsets. 3. Displacement, environmental refugees. 4. Benefit for privileged groups versus vulnerable groups. 5. Shrinking space for animals leading to human-animal conflict. D. Content should incorporate Indian and local knowledge and perspectives. It must engage the student with indigenous knowledge and viewpoints and enable them to present their analysis and findings through different mediums and perspectives. For example, 1. Cropping pattern 2. Reviving lost crops 3. Sustainable practices that have both evolved historically but have been lost in the country such as drainage, cooling, water systems, cultural traditions related to agriculture, forests, flora and fauna. 4. Step wells, sacred groves. 5. Animal rights, rights of other entities within nature, nature as our home and caregiver whom we must respect and protect, indigenous perspectives. 6. Organic agriculture. Page number 411. E. Content must enable school-based actions. It should enable advocacy at different levels and through different means. For example, 1. Use of creative media that can enable recording of environmental issues, challenges and positive actions and stories. Example, videos. 2. Development of materials. Example, newsletter, scripts for motivation, articles, for dissemination in the community. F. Content must enable informed and well-researched group discussions and debate. Debates that are topical and pertinent should be included, particularly around balancing development with preservation of the environment. For example, 1. Older and contemporary environmental debates, development versus environmental preservation, movement from cities for sustainable living, 
7.5.2.2.2 Recommended Approach Students will take up specific issues and examine their impact using an interdisciplinary lens. They will discuss root causes, impact and mitigation of these environmental issues. While the approach can be varied, it is recommended that the triple planetary crisis, biodiversity collapse, pollution, climate change comprise the themes to be taken up during the secondary stage. To ensure a holistic understanding of all aspects with the required depth, it is recommended that experiential learning be enabled through case studies, site explorations, projects, guided readings and other similar approaches. Whichever approach is taken, students should be able to examine the issue locally and then extend their understanding into regional, national and international concerns and actions. The underlying principle is to provide evidence-based understanding of both the crisis and its mitigation. Another principle is to ensure a holistic understanding as opposed to a fragmented understanding of perspectives from science, social science, human rights, politics, ethics and justice. This principle is operationalized through approaching the content using a social environmental systems framework. Box 7.5.1 a social environmental systems framework provides a useful conceptual frame for understanding the interlinkages between society and nature that have implications for sustainability. The framework lays emphasis on interdisciplinarity, integrating conceptual frameworks and methods from the natural and social sciences for a holistic understanding of sustainability challenges. Central to the social-environmental systems framework are ideas of equity, environmental justice and human well-being fundamental to the development of sustainable societies. The implications of the social-environmental systems framework in the school curriculum are to help students to develop awareness of and concern about interdependence between the natural and human-made environments and the various dimensions – economic, socio-cultural, political, historical, ethical and aesthetic – of human societies. They also appreciate the need for balance between the environment and human society. Page number 412 These three selected themes – biodiversity collapse, pollution and climate change are central to the current planetary crisis and provide a comprehensive understanding of issues as well as mitigation. It may be important to highlight other issues as well. However, it is strongly recommended that the approach given below is followed. This approach balances all aspects while providing a comprehensive understanding of local and regional issues. A. Students should be able to gain an understanding of the causes and history of each of the themes and key issues related to each of the three through case studies, guided readings, site explorations, projects and similar approaches. b. It is preferred that the content should be contextual, located in the community, region or state where the school is located. If this is not possible, it must be ensured that at least a part of content students engage with is contextual. c. Content being used should offer rigour while being simple. Teachers should refer to similar issues which can be included in the textbook to ensure a broader understanding. 7.5.2.3 Pedagogy and Assessment The approach, principles and methods of pedagogy and assessment have commonalities across subjects. Those have been discussed in Part A, Chapter 3, Section 3.3 and Section 3.4 of this document. This section focuses only on what is most essential for environmental education in schools. Hence, it will be useful to read this section along with the above-mentioned section. 
7.5.2.3.1 Pedagogy for Environmental Education Students must examine environmental issues not only from a scientific technological lens but also from the lens of the social sciences and humanities they must examine how the actions of individuals communities and nations both historical and contemporary can have far reaching consequences pedagogy must therefore be informed by the following a teacher must deliberately plan for the development of environmental values and dispositions they should be made explicit for students by drawing attention to environmental values embedded in case studies and narratives box 7.5 2 environmental values encompass sensitivity towards social political economic cultural and natural environment and phenomena and the ability and motivation to identify and raise questions related to dignity justice and rights they also include aesthetic appreciation of surroundings including diversity of the physical and socio cultural environment environmental education critically addresses both social and natural concerns social concerns include issues of gender and marginalization equity justice and respect for dignity and rights it also encourages students to develop knowledge about indigenous practices for prevention of environmental degradation natural concerns include issues related to survival of animal species and animal rights and sustainable use of resources like forests and rivers therefore environmental education enables in students a well developed set of environmental values as well as the capacity to participate and initiate actions to remediate or prevent further degradation of the environment and promote sustainability page number 413 b much of the content should be presented through debates and discussion and not as a definitely concluded position this allows for the opening of possibilities and developing abilities for critical engagement these abilities must be developed through investigation analysis and problem solving and similar strategies that are relevant to their own communities c debates around historical and contemporary issues in education enable the development of the ability to take actions through critical engagement with theory and practice d students must identify how they can express their understanding in the community whether through advocacy or simply through dialogue e students must get as much exposure as possible at this stage through books media films dialogue among peers and elders interaction with peers from other schools video conferencing with experts and peers outside the city or country f teachers must not consider self and textbook as the only sources but enable interaction with other persons and or media to expand students's learning teachers must have a resource pool of persons who can support their learning g a significant platform must be provided to students to share their experiences findings and reflections school newsletter seminars publications tv interviews social media h for continued learning throughout the year students can take up a project or participate in an ongoing project example cleaning rivers community projects sustainable school practices green school volunteering for local organizations dedicated to environmental causes i students must be encouraged to read materials on the environment and present synthesis of readings reviews of relevant books and films videos 
programs and reflections can also be shared teachers voices 7.55 key studies when i think about what i want my students to learn about the environment i realize the question is difficult they must be aware of the danger the world is in because of environmental degradation however the future seems so dismal that i don't want them to think that their lives hold no hope my responsibility deepens because of this dilemma i plan to share the realities of the triple planetary crisis with them but also provide them with details of initiatives taken by individuals and communities to make small changes that have a positive impact on the environment i also want to help them develop a sense of how to respond as members of a community to decisions and policies made by governments related to the environment i think the best way to achieve these goals is to give them detailed case studies to read these case studies must help students understand not only the context and specific issues but also actions taken to address these issues there are several instances in our country of people who have revived traditional practices of conservation or used simple technology to devise solutions and alternatives reading these case studies will not only help students adopt a positive solution oriented attitude it will also help them see how communities can take action at a local level page number 414 7.5.2.3.2 assessment in environmental education a few of the key principles for assessment in environmental education are a students must be assessed for understanding of environmental issues and concerns as well as their ability to identify actions that can be taken to mitigate these issues b assessment must be based on the context of a situation or event or use caselets a few teacher voices below illustrate the different kind of assessments teachers voice 7.5 6 animal human conflict i teach grade 10 the following question assesses students's understanding of animal human conflict instead of directly asking them about the effect of shrinking spaces for animals it refers to a recent event and assesses their ability to identify the most viable solution that is wildlife corridors A tiger was captured on CCTV cameras on the night of May 7, 2023, in Mahu near Indore in Madhya Pradesh. It was captured again on the night of May 10, 2023, by CCTV cameras. Despite an intensive search, including through the use of drones, the tiger was not located. No attack on any human or animal was reported. Forest department officials say that in 2019-20 pug marks had been seen in Mahu although no tiger was spotted they confirmed that tigers have been spotted in the forests close to the town experts say that the tiger may have wandered into the town looking for a partner or may be migrating to establish its own habitat what can be done to protect the persons living in the town while ensuring tigers are also allowed to thrive please choose the most appropriate option or options a forest near the town should be fenced in completely to avoid movement of tigers outside the protected areas b people living in the town should avoid going out at night and keep domestic animals safely locked in shelters C lots of shrubs and trees should be planted in pieces of unused land between areas that are more 
thickly forested d cages should be set up to trap tigers that can then be released into protected forest areas e other i used the following marking scheme a 0 b 0 c 4 d 0 e 0 page number 415 teachers voice 7.57 biodiversity collapse i teach grade 10 The following question assesses students's understanding of an environmental issue and strategies developed for mitigation. Instead of a direct question, students are asked to think of the case studies they have engaged with and choose one to elaborate. It also assesses students's holistic understanding of both the issue and why specific strategies work in that context. using any example describe how biodiversity collapse affected a specific community illustrate how local action by the community helped mitigate the impact of the collapse why do you think their strategy or strategies are important this is the marking scheme that i used students responses states the aspect of the biodiversity collapse that was addressed by the community one mark describes the social implications one mark describes the environmental implications one mark explains the strategy or strategies for mitigation one mark explains why the strategy or strategies were identified one mark explains how the strategy or strategies were implemented one mark states the result of implementing the strategy or strategies one mark provides reasons for the success of the strategy or strategies one mark states why they chose to describe the strategy or strategies one mark explains how the strategy or strategies can be used in other places one mark teachers voice 7.5 8 revival of lakes i teach grade 10 the following question assesses students's capacity to synthesize various aspects of a situation and come up with possible actions based on a sound rationale instead of asking students to recall and state the strategies needed for revival of a lake the question provides a specific context students can draw on this context as well as their broader understanding to propose specific strategies read the following extract and answer the questions Nazafgarh Lake Despite a mention in the Delhi Gazetteer of 1883 and the Survey of India map of 1911 currently the Delhi government says that the Nazafgarh Lake latitude 28 degree 36 minutes 38 dot 67 minutes north longitude 76 degree 59 minutes 12 dot 18 minutes east altitude 216 meters no longer exists in delhi page number 416 prior to the 1970s najafgarh lake in southwest delhi occupied more than 300 square kilometers and was a biodiversity hotspot home to various water birds and local wildlife the fact that a vast lake never existed here in the region comes as a surprise to most residents of the area and the need for resurrecting it is not a popular topic of discussion status of nazafgarh lake currently the lake stands as a topographical depression brimming with overgrown grass and garbage as of 2015 the erstwhile lake has been removed from delhi's map instead of reviving it the lake's disappearance and its use as a dumping ground has raised health concerns for the local population who are migrants from neighboring states of delhi the land owned by delhi development authority or dda has been loaned to the government girls senior secondary school in dharampura with intentions to convert it into a park Despite erection of benches and swings and placement of a fence around the area the land suffers from poor maintenance 
pollution is rampant in the area and the Nazafgarh drain, previously known as Sahibi River with its origin near Najafgarh Lake, is now one of the most polluting sources, contributing to the degradation of the river Yamuna. Lowering of the groundwater table, encroachment and concrete constructions have led to the lake drying up. Due to absence of proper water resources, planning and scientific management by involved authorities. Residents reported the presence of fish up until 10 years ago and said the lake dried up 5 years ago. Plans for Revival In 2019, the Delhi government announced a plan to revive Najafgarh Lake and declare it a notified wetland. The government hopes that the lake's revival will help address water needs in southwest Delhi. However, not all residents are pleased with the idea since they are apprehensive it will cause floods in the vicinity in the monsoon. Elders narrate stories of the troubles they faced due to flooding of the lake every monsoon. People who have encroached on the riverbed are also angry since they feel their homes are threatened. Some persons have even started farming on parts of the riverbed and feel their livelihood is threatened. Experts cited a Central Groundwater Board report in favour of the lake's revival. As per the report, water table in southwest Delhi is in the semi-critical category. The presence of a large water body in the area would bring down the temperature by a few degrees. Once the water body is revived, the soil in that area would be able to hold more moisture, which would in turn help the growth of trees. It would also help to prevent runoff during heavy rains and prevent flooding, said environmentalist C. R. Babu. Sources Rastogi, Paridhi and Singh, SK, 2017 Revival and Rejuvenation Strategy of Water Bodies in a Metropolitan City A Case Study of Najafgarh Lake, Delhi, India International Journal of Advanced Research or IJAR Page number 189-195 Roy Chaudhary, Adrija, 2019 Villagers Divided Over Revival of Najafgarh Lake Hindustan Times, New Delhi what strategies would you recommend to the Delhi government to make the lake revival project a success? Give reasons for choosing the strategies. Page number 417. The marking scheme that I use is as follows. Students' responses. Picks only a few unrelated points from the passage. One mark. States one strategy without giving a reason. Two marks. States more than one strategy with no reason, 3 marks, states multiple strategies with supporting rationale from the passage, 4 marks, selects multiple strategies and states rationale based on a generalized understanding of the issue, 5 marks. 7.5.3 Teachers At the preparatory stage, we need teachers who have specific capacities. Illustratively, pedagogical approaches informed by an understanding of the context of students' ability to evolve understanding through discussion and of the use of multiple methods, capacities like observation and experimentation, ability to connect beyond specific themes and environmental awareness and sensitivity. Teachers of either science or social science can teach the world around us till pre-service programs start offering this specialization, provided they undergo well-designed in-service modules. At the secondary stage, the social science teacher should teach individuals in society and the science teacher should teach environmental education. In grade 9, there will be a need for teachers who are aware of issues or events in the four domains that must be covered. Teachers of social science will be best placed for teaching individuals in society. Training modules must focus not only on content but must also require 
teachers to examine their personal moral and ethical frameworks. At the same time, teachers within the school must meet regularly to discuss current affairs and strengthen their own capacity for discussion and debate and the application of ethical and moral reasoning as well as applying interdisciplinary understanding. This will also help ensure inclusion of different perspectives and subject-related expertise. In grade 10, the science teacher should handle environmental education as content at this stage would include scientific concepts and ideas. If the science teacher is not available, the social science teacher can take up this subject. However, the teacher should be cautious to not overemphasize content or capacities that are more aligned to their own subject of specialization and bring in elements as needed from the other area. The teacher of environmental education should combine relevant understanding of both science and social science at the school level and be able to draw linkages between the two in the context of the subject. The pre-service curriculum must have environmental education as a compulsory component. Student teachers can also undertake projects and small research studies related to environmental education aligned to those expected from school students. Until this transition is made, well-designed training modules will be needed to capacitate teachers. You were just listening to the National Curriculum Framework 2023. This is brought to you by CIET NCERT, New Delhi, India.